everybody, welcome back to the dungeon. Today what I want to do is contrast two different models for the way hip action, bracing, and balance tilt work together in an advanced form. If what I talk about today looks too subtle, or you can't feel the difference, or you can't even implement it, this is not for you. Maybe you, you go on to work with something else, but uh, I've spent a lot of time trying to understand why certain forms give a very substantial different appearance and different effect and uh, I, hopefully this explains part of what you might have found confusing. So prerequisites. First of all, we're in athletic stance, okay? Laid on the t a little bit loaded toward the balls of the feet, a little bit of bounce here, hinging back a little bit at the hips, okay? We've talked about that. Some of you are going to be comfortable down here in a Macbeth-like stance. I am not that athletic. I am, I'm up here like a Feldberg. I'm going to do most of my action up here. Both fine. Find what's your acceptable range. Number two, we need to find balanced tilt. So I call this balanced tilt in the north-south direction, where if north is toward the target and south is behind me down the T, I want to be able to tilt my body in both directions to balance freely on each leg. Now, you need to be shifting closed within number two. What I mean by that is I can either be stepping out with my toe open and my knee pointing that way. And what that means is that I've already leaked some power by the time I've planted. I can be shifting closed, which means I've allowed my body to turn back away and I plant shifted closed. So now there's building up some internal torque as I land and the arm is free to, to carry on and um, move down the line. Okay. So you can practice this in both directions. So we can take this drill linked below and get the feel for shifting closed in that direction and shifting closed in that direction. Now, here's one of the problems, and here are two options for hip action in that context. One model is the idea that we're going to get a complete butt wipe. And a butt wipe is basically kind of what it sounds like. Closing back here and wiping that butt cheek all the way around as you land on the plant. So the advantages of this move are that we have a very big shift in your center of mass, carrying it all the way here, that starts to lead the maneuver that way. Features of this move, you tend to get more accumulating acceleration from the peak of the backswing or reach back, okay? And so by bringing your center back and then allowing it to lead the entire move in this direction, there's a lot of space and there's a lot of room for that center to sort of tow that maneuver down the line, okay? And let me show it in this direction. So if we want to do a complete butt weight maneuver, I'm going down the line in this direction. Okay. Who is that good for? Well, I think we still need to know more about this, but what I tend to see and what I try to emulate as a bigger guy is Garrett Gerthy has a very large movement of his center as mass, not just in this direction, but also in this direction as he moves down the line. There's just a, a bit of a precession, like a washing machine in his maneuver. And so that involves a very large butt wipe where he's turned back very far away to give the appearance of leaning. And then when he lands in that maneuver, he's getting the full weight of his mass boosted with gravity, committing that large, uh, what to me looks like an arm swing um, coming in and coming out from the center. Okay, so you can play with that option and, and maybe it works for some of the, the kind of uh, larger body types, um, something you can play with. Option two, this maneuver, very similar mechanics. We still have tilt, okay? We're still shifting closed through the hips. The difference in this maneuver is we're not going to move the center as much. So we're gonna to tend to, to kind of keep the center a little bit more between the feet here. And it could be quite a bit smaller than this as long as we can get from foot to foot. And in this maneuver, we get much less of a butt wipe in proportion to that. So we would take it back and we would land here. You could stay a little bit more ball of foot loaded. You could get a little bit more in the heel, but you've got this range of motion. What are the advantages of this maneuver? Well, if I take my center back just a bit and move forward, maybe you can find a little bit more quickness. That's possible for certain bodies and players. Another advantage of this may be that as I take the backswing back, now you'll notice people show this move to get back into the coil, which is a perfectly acceptable way to think about side bend 
and coiling back. And so by the time you have the coil back in a narrower movement motion of the center, you can still get a fairly abrupt landing and quick transition starting at the peak of the backswing or reach back. Meaning that as soon as I'm landing here, as my, as my foot is starting to resist the ground, I've already started to see some of that acceleration coming down the line. So again, these are issues of extremes. I think if you're going to take the smaller center move, right, you're going to be able to, to feel hopefully up. I get a little resistance on my leg quickly. I can get here quick and I can commit it down the line. Um, maybe our, our longer, taller body types that aren't as massive could find advantage in this. Maybe people that are quick and athletic at getting foot to foot and just using the quickness out of that backswing might fit this advantageous. So this is kind of a crude way to reduce a lot of things in the motion, but if force equals mass times velocity squared, I'd definitely rather be quick before I'm massive, but if I'm also massive, why would I leave that advantage on the table? So try these out. If you found that in any way interesting, uh, shoot me a comment below, and thanks for your attention. Good luck.